Uh, for more, let's cross to uh, Nicola Mazzucchi, research fellow at the Foundation for Strategic Research uh, Think Tank. Thank you for joining us here on France 24. Thank you for the invitation. So you hear Colony Pipeline in that report saying they didn't pay. The Bloomberg News Agency, quoting two sources, said they did. Who do you believe? Uh, I think that in most uh, most cases, the, the most important is not to pay, because if you're paying, you're sending a message for uh, future attackers to uh, try again the, this kind of ransom. So it's uh, um, mostly recommended not to pay. Does the report by Bloomberg seem credible to you? Maybe the, the problem is that we're only at the beginning of the information release on this cyber attack, whether the technical elements of the cyber attack itself or the consequences. So for the moment, uh, we have very few elements in order to produce an interesting analysis. So uh, yes, the, the report seems uh, credible, yet uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not having enough elements to, uh, to produce a very interesting analysis on this topic. So uh, we're, we're trying, it, it, we didn't think we'd still be talking about it on Thursday, but yes, yet we are. We're still trying to piece together what is dark side, it, 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 which is the, 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 the cyber hackers who claim responsibility. Is it just a criminal enterprise? Is it a government disguised as, as a, uh, dis disguised as a criminal enterprise? Is it a bit of both? Yeah, that's the most important problem in terms of cyber security and cyber warfare today, is that it's very easy to hide your own identity in order to create some blur uh, in strategic terms um, that should be uh, or may be a cyber criminal group that could be only cyber criminal, but that could be cyber criminal group used by a state. It could be a state in disguise. It could be anything. The problem is that there is a very important growth, both in terms of cyber crime, but also in terms of state-sponsored cyber attacks. And most of the time, um, states are using real cyber crime organization in order to hide their own operations. And what do you make of that statement where they said, uh, we're sorry, we didn't mean to do this much damage? <laughs> That's quite ironic. Yet, uh, it's also an important feature of cyber attacks that uh, when releasing a malware, it's not possible to assess all the damages you're going to do. Uh, the problem is that there is a very important backlash features uh, in terms of cyber conflict. And that's why cyber conflict is so important in terms of concern from international authorities, especially in the UN, for example. So it's been, it's been six days since the attack on Friday. And uh, I'm reading that Colony Pipeline has had to send maintenance workers the whole, what is it, more than a thousand kilometers uh, of uh, the pipeline's route uh, to check everything. Are, your thoughts on uh, why it's been so long to, to get it back up and running? Well, because uh, the consequences, if uh, there are uh, in some parts of the system of the company uh, could be uh, very important. So in order to restart the operation and to reassure the customers of Colonial Pipeline, you have to be sure that there are no more elements remaining, no more um, IT systems that could have been infected by this malware. On Wednesday, US President Joe Biden an announcing an executive order. He was due to speak again this Thursday about it. Um, I mean, we're seeing the long gas lines. He's most notably in his executive order uh, called on companies now to beef up their security. What is that really going? Is can ex an executive order really serve as a wake up call? Like, how do you do it? Uh, the problem is that the U.S. government is very aware of uh, the weaknesses of the digital operations in its energy sector. Uh, since uh, 20, 2011, 2015, there have been uh, growth in terms of uh, interagency cooperation between Department of Homeland Security, Department of Defense, Department of Energy. Yet the problem is that in the United States, the federal government is having very limited powers uh, in terms of uh, forcing the private actors to implement cybersecurity features, to uh, raise up their cybersecurity level, and so on. And that's a, a very important issue, but it's uh, specific to the federal system in the United States. You say it's specific to the federal system in the United States. Are we better 
protected here in France, where, by the way, we have lots of nuclear power plants, for instance? Uh, yes, because uh, in France and in Europe, we're having um, stronger regulations over the cybersecurity of critical infrastructure operators. Um, first of all, it has been developed in France by the ANSI, and it's also, uh, since uh, 2018, um, a very important core policy in terms of cybersecurity from the European Union with the NIS directive, which is also being revised at the moment we, we are speaking. Uh, so the European Union is very aware of uh, this issue and very pushy in terms of cybersecurity norms to ensure that this kind of, um, of case cannot occur in Europe. Um, and talking about the, the nuclear power plants, there is also another level. That's the International Atomic Agency, uh, International Atomic Energy Agency, excuse me, uh, regulations that should, could be considered uh, the toughest in the world in terms of cybersecurity. So regarding this element in France, we're having, for example, these three levels of cybersecurity requirements, the international, the European and the French. Nicolas Mazuki, what, what's your what keeps you from sleeping at night? Is it uh, the nuclear power plants keeping them safe? Is it the, the, these fears that uh, uh, cyber hackers could take over uh, the traffic lights of a major city? What what, what worries you the most? Um, yeah, the, my my most important worry for the moment is that uh, tomorrow and undefined tomorrow uh, we can have cyber attacks that are not targeting the IT, so the information technology, that's what is happening today with Colonial Pipeline, but that can switch from the IT to the OT, to the operational technology. For the moment, there have been only very few major cyber attacks that have been targeted the OT. For example, Stuxnet was the, the, the most famous. Uh, yet, with the switch from IT-based cyber attack to OT-based cyber attack, um, we could expect very... Um, important cyber attacks in terms of damages. For the moment, it's just a pipeline that stopped running because the company wanted to clean its IT system. Data have been stolen yet, but there have been no direct harm, no direct death from uh, cyber. Tomorrow, it could be different. So the, the growth in terms of uh, uh, Internet of Things, and especially industrial Internet of Things, uh, seems worrying if there are no proper regulations um, put in place in terms of both security by design, but also privacy by design. Yeah, uh, it's not just industrial, of course. Uh, more and more connected objects in our consumer goods, uh, Nicolas Mazuki. Are you the kind of guy who changes his password every week? <laughs> um, every week, I'm not that sure. It depends. It depends on the password. Uh, yet, the, my, my major concern is really the, this idea of uh, not having my data stolen. It could happen. But uh, tomorrow, having, uh, for example, a connected medical device or uh, having a cyber attack towards um, an industrial device, for example, uh, the industrial control system on the automatic uh, subway. This is very worrying, for example. But again, um, France uh, and France's administration, but also European Union, are very aware of these elements, and that's why they are strengthening the regulations towards cybersecurity for these critical infrastructure operators. Nicolas Mazuki of the uh, Foundation for Strategic Research Think Tank. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you.